Hello everyone. In this video, we will see torsional stresses. First, we will look at the difference between moment and torque. If there is a shaft which is fixed at one end and free at other end, and two forces of magnitude P are applied at the free end, such that it forms a couple. If moment about x-axis is taken, then there will be bending about x-axis. And, the moment will be P multiplied by A. Similarly, if the same shaft is considered, and, if the moment about z-axis is taken, then, the shaft will twist. Moment about z-axis will cause torsion in the shaft. This moment is called as torque which is denoted by capital T. Next, we will look at the sign convention. The moment generated due to twisting will be either clockwise or anti-clockwise in nature. For this, we will be using right hand thumb rule. Consider the right hand. If the fingers are rotating in anti-clockwise direction, then the thumb points outwards. So the moment will be taken as outwards. This moment is shown by double arrows in the outward direction. Similarly, when the fingers of the right hand move in clockwise direction, then, the thumb points towards the shaft that is inwards. And, the moment is shown towards the shaft using double arrows. So, the clockwise moment will be shown inwards using double arrows, while, the anti-clockwise moment will be shown outwards using double arrows. We will see the derivation of equation of torsion. Consider shaft which is fixed at one end and free at the other end. Consider a plane A, A dash, B, B dash marked in red color. Points, A dash and B dash, are fixed, while points, A and B, are at the free end of the shaft. Let me zoom in a little bit. Point O is the origin at both ends. Consider T is the torque applied which is clockwise at free end, and anti-clockwise at fixed end. After the application of torque, the shaft will be twisted, and, there will be new position of the shaft at free end. Look for the plane A1, B1, B dash, A dash, which is shown in green color. Angle theta and angle phi are marked for your reference. Radius of shaft is capital RN. The length of the shaft is L. Angle A, A dash. A1 is equal to phi and angle A, O, A1 is equal to theta. Phi is called the shear strain since it is generated due to shear stress acting on the surface of the shaft because of torsion. While, theta is called the angle of twist. Now if you remember, the length of the arc of a circle is calculated using the formula, radius multiplied by the angle. So here, A, A1, is equal to L multiplied by phi. which is also equal to r multiplied by theta. Therefore, phi becomes equal to r theta upon l. Tau max is the maximum shear stress at the surface. The shear stress, due to torsion, will vary from zero at the center of the shaft to maximum at the surface of the shaft. We know from Hooke's law that stress is directly proportional to strain. Similarly, shear stress will be directly proportional to shear strain. Therefore, tau max is directly proportional to phi. The constant of proportionality, here, will be shear modulus, which is denoted by capital G. Hence the equation becomes, tau max equals to G multiplied by phi. Therefore, tau max equals G multiplied by R theta divided by L. Therefore, tau max divided by R equals G theta upon L. Tau max is the maximum stress at the surface. But, if you want to calculate shear stress at any point between the center and the surface, consider the distance small r from center. Modifying the formula, it will give tau by r equals g theta upon l. Consider cross section of the shaft. And, consider a ring inside the shaft. Delta s be the small elemental strip and delta r be the thickness of that strip. The radius of the inner ring is small r while the radius of the cross section is capital R. The torque is applied in clockwise direction at the cross section at free end. Now, 
force on delta S equal to stress multiplied by area. Therefore, force equals to tau multiplied by delta S multiplied by delta R which is equal to tau multiplied by dS multiplied by dR. The moment of this force is equals to force into perpendicular distance. That is, tau into dS into dR multiplied by small r. Therefore, the torsional resistance of the ring equals to integration of tau dS dR into r between the limits 0 and 2 pi r. Here, tau, dr, and r are constant over the ring. The only thing that changes is ds. That is why the limits of the integration vary from 0 to 2 pi r. After solving the integration, the torsional resistance comes as tau into 2 pi r square into dr. In the previous equation of tau max, the right-hand side of the equation are same, hence we can equate the left side of the equation. Therefore, tau by small r equals tau max by capital R. We get tau equals tau max into small r divided by capital R. This equation will be used in equation of torsional resistance. After substituting the value, we get capital T equals tau max multiplied by 2 pi multiplied by small r cubed multiplied by dr, whole divided by capital R. If we want to calculate, total torsional resistance of the shaft we will be integrating the value of capital T in the limits 0 to capital R. Therefore T equals to integration 0 to R, tau max multiplied by 2 pi multiplied by small r cube multiplied by dr, whole divided by capital R. Only dr will be changing as now we are considering the expansion of the ring for calculating total torque on the cross section. Keeping all other things constant, and after solving the integration, we get t equals to tau max upon r into pi d raised to 4 upon 32. But the polar moment of inertia of circular section which is denoted by j or izz or ip is equals to pi d raised to 4 by 32. Hence the equation of t becomes tau max upon r into j therefore the final equation comes out to be t upon j equals to tau max upon r equals to g theta upon l. There is an analogy between flexural formula and the torsional formula. Flexural formula is m by i equal to sigma by y equal to e by r. For m, that is, moment, the analogous quantity is t, that is, torque. For i, that is, moment of inertia, it is j, that is, polar moment of inertia. For sigma, that is, bending stress, it is tau, shear stress. For y, which is, distance of fiber from neutral axis, the analogous quantity is, radial distance r. For e, that is, Young's modulus, it is G, shear modulus. And, for R, which is, radius of curvature along the length of the beam, the analogous quantity is, length of shaft by angle of twist. We will now see, what is the power transmitted in shaft. If the shaft rotates by alpha radians per second, under torque T, work done per second, is equal to T multiplied by alpha. The units of T, that is, torque, are newton meter, which is same as the units of work done. Work done per second is nothing but power transmitted by the shaft, which is equal to T into alpha. If the shaft rotates with the frequency of n rotations per minute, alpha will be equal to 2 pi n divided by 60. This will be in rotations per second. Therefore, the power transmitted will be T pi n divided by 30 newton meter per second, which is also called as watts. 1 watt is equal to 10 raised to minus 3 kilowatts. If you loved watching this video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel for more updates. I will be regularly uploading the videos on strength of materials. If you want any other concept explained, kindly comment under the video. Thank you.